I had a slightly, slightly too liquidy porridge this morning. Absolute nightmare. Civilization in flames. An intolerable wrong. Right, let's go with... My last search was Google. Let's go with... Is climate change... Climate change. The wikipedia.org result on climate change. There's the NASA climate change website. Then the US government. Then BBC. Then the IPCC. Then Europe. Europa.eu. The establishment have really nailed the first page on is climate change, climate change. I wonder how far you have to scroll in Google to get to the, the juicy reactionaries that I'm really looking for. You know I want them. Look at this. Look at this boring mainstream stuff. That picture on overfishing looks mental. Look at all those fish. Look at all those fish. I've never seen more than I, I think six fish at once. It's not in my life. I've, you know, I've seen, seen several fish. Edward Gray wrote books on fishing. And in one of his books, he said, while you're waiting for the fish, you must not be there. Only when the fish is there, must you be there. Is climate change, climate change? No. The poet John Ashbery, in his Paris Review interview, mentioned that he used the word climate too much in his poems. The word climate. Oh, what? Paris reviews behind a paywall now. What a joke. I'll try and find a John Ashbery poem where he uses the word climate. Oh, his last, his last ever poem was called Climate Correction, handwritten in his home in Hudson, New York on August 25th. So what if there was an attempt to widen? Don't you hate it when you get like the website perfectly and then all this crap comes flying at you. So what if there was an attempt to widen the gap? Reel in the scenery. It's unlike us to reel in the difference. We got the room in other hands to exit like a merino ghost. What was I telling you about? Walks in the reeds. Be contumely, contumely about it. You need a chaser. In other words, persist, but rather a dense shadow fanned out. Not exactly evil, but you get the point. It's not his best poem, but I I'm glad that this was the last line of poetry he uh, he wrote. Uh, it suits him. I can't think of a man in the last 50 years who, who I love more without a reservation than John Ashbery. The climate is pretty. I wrote everything on it. I've been meaning to pick up a bag of lettuce on my way home. This is the thing that I needed. What's it supposed to be of? I like his poetry because it approaches me on my own terms. I don't have to pry into it. I can follow a thought to somewhere other than the end of the thought. Some beautiful stream of stuff. Who cares what it is? I get annoyed seeing it described as difficult. Difficult poetry. It's extremely easy poetry. It's more easy than most prose. Most prose is, you know, the cat sat on the mat. You gotta picture the cat, you gotta picture the mat, you gotta understand their relationships. Oh, it's got nothing to do with me. Tedious, futile. Climate is a word that has been perhaps beyond repair, politicized. Climate and, well, the most obvious one is probably gay. You don't hear the word gay meaning joyful anymore at the age of 11. It's extremely hilarious, all the uses of gay. I'm a fan of uh, the Nietzsche book, The Gay Science. I think the title they give it now is like The Joyful Science. Fröhliche Wissenschaft? Oh, my personal favourite is the, uh, the Sam Cooke song, Twisting the Night Away. Let me tell you about a place Somewhere down in New York way Where the people are so gay Twisting the night away did Sam write that? I know Sam Cooke wrote a surprising number of his songs. What a wonderful world. I think the original was, I don't know much about things that were not uh, academic subjects. And Sam Cooke was the one who made it about, I am rubbish at school, but I am so in love with you that that is irrelevant information. I always wished I could relate to that song more than, more than I can. I'm quite good at academia, but I, d I do not know what it means to love. <laughs> it's a song written and and recorded by Sam Cooke, Twisting the Night Away. Great, where the people are so gay. Twisting the Night Away lyrics. There's a man in evening clothes, how he got there, I don't know. Man, you find the old and young twisting the night away. They're twisting, twisting, they're twisting the night away. Everybody's feeling great. The thing about Sam Cooke songs is even when they're sort of corny and lame, he sings it so extremely well that you're sort of forced to believe it's happening, at least for the duration of the song. 
song. There's one with such an awful bridge. It's a beautiful song. What is it? It's like, you're the apple of my eye, you cherry pie. And ooh, you cake and ice cream, <laughs> you sugar and spice and everything nice. You're the girl of my dreams. The worst lyrics imaginable. But you believe it while he's singing it. Apple of my eye. Your cherry pie. Your cake and ice cream. Nothing can change this love. When Sam Cooke sings it, you are convinced that nothing can change this love. And he did write it as well. <laughs> he wrote these terrible lyrics. Oh, you're the apple of my eye. Listen to me. Your cherry pie. Dreadful and so moving. Moving. So good. It's a beautiful song, this one. This may even be my favourite of his songs. It's such a good tune. If you go a million miles away, I write you a letter each and every day. Honey, nothing. Nothing. Oh, infinite love for Sam Cooke. Art men that I like are approved of by me. I love that Sam Cooke learned to sing by singing to God and then partway through his career suddenly started singing about uh, other men and women the same age. But singing to them as if still singing to God really does it for me. Uh, what is climate change? Uh, climate change is affecting wine flavors. That's exciting. How does the heat affect grapes? Magical solar grape relationship. Moon's wobble. Lunar wobble. Lunar wobble. Lunar wobble. Page 19. Space flights will only worsen climate change. The Bank of Japan's strategy on climate change in PDF form. Hope it's not in Japanese. Fantastic. Um, God, the Bank of Japan really don't put much effort into sexing up their prose. Ugh, bloody Nora. Ugh. Look at this as a, as a sort of clause. In accordance with its existing principle of proper and efficient central bank business operations. Ugh. You can tell Sam Cooke didn't write this. Climate change causes. You know, all these people are saying that the, the climate is changing because of the greenhouse gases. We know there's a correlation between the overall global temperature and the greenhouse gases. But have they asked themselves maybe the only reason these things correlate is because increasing global temperatures cause humans in their brain delirium to put out more greenhouse gases. The hotter the world is, the more people like coal and oil. They're getting it the wrong way around. I worry that some comment like this will be censored by, by the YouTube uh, irony police, the World Health Organization. No one had heard of them, and suddenly everyone had heard of them. World Health Organization climate change, page 4. Five. Page five. Oh, are they censoring page five now? Something about the way they've advertised these deaths makes it look like they're very happy about it. Just something about the font, the colour scheme, makes it look quite jolly, doesn't it? It looks like progress. Looks like they're advertising progress. Something about the blue 500 hospitals built. It's the kind of thing that I'd expect to be written here with this font on this blue background. I'm not suggesting that the WHO are pro-death. I think the WHO are pro-immortality. Perhaps facts, sheets, health benefits far outweigh the costs of meeting climate change goals. What could that mean? Health costs far outweigh the benefits of meeting climate change. Health benefits far outweigh the health benefits of not meeting climate change costs. The cost of meeting climate change health benefits far outweighs the goals of meeting climate change health benefits costs. Health meetings far outweigh the costs of climate meetings. Benefits far outweigh goals. Change far outweighs health. Gregory Hertel. Hertel. Gregory Hertel. Oh, look at these. You can you can email them. Should I message hartlg at who.int? I feel sorry for the band The Who. I bet when you Google The Who, they, they aren't number one anymore. Oh, they are number one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 
let's see what Gregory Hartle did earlier in his life. He's on Instagram. He's a communications officer. Interesting to get a stock photo of Gregory Hartle. Look at that. Look at look at look at a lot. Look at that. This is interesting. The way his knuckle is pushing into his chin. It does look lip shaped. This extra part of his chin. It looks like like if he genuinely had another pair of lips underneath this sort of crease in his chin. I wouldn't be that surprised. Oh wow! Look at Gregory Hartle's mustache. Look at that. All the way up and all the way down, like a jet white rainbow. I don't think jet white makes sense. I mean, jet is a rock, isn't it? Jet is a rock that is a black rock so you can only say jet black jet is the lowest rank of coal coal black the blackest black gregory hartle's mustache is not the blackest black gregory hartle looks a bit like an aged glenn greenwald here it, it looks similar faces but like you got to imagine him looking older glenn greenwald Gregory Hartle. No, actually, yeah, I, I immediately take that back. Does Glenn Greenwald look like Kevin Spacey, though? That's a new question. Yeah, not not too far. Let's get Kevin looking a bit younger. Uh, you know. Glenn Greenwald and Kevin Spacey's reputations are rather different at the moment. Such an American head. <laughs> It looks like another man's hand. Like that Rembrandt picture of the operating table, how the hand is the wrong way round. Looks like that. Do, you, are we, are we all, do we all know the Rembrandt here? Like, you know the way, like, the hand in this painting looks, it's the wrong way round? Like, look, he's got, like, that hand, it's a right hand, but this hand is also a right hand. The hand is the wrong way round. And this picture of Glenn Greenwald, the photographer clearly was making some sort of Rembrandt reference. Because this is clearly a left hand. <laughs> wow, I'd, I've never seen this selfie of Snowden with Greenwald. It's weird seeing Snowden smiling. He seems like a, a man who's, for good reason, a little peeved. Glenn smiling less. You just want to smile back at Edward Snowden. He looks so, he looks so happy. Yeah, it's so weird seeing selfies taken by Edward Snowden next to Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald has closed his eyes for this photo, like Brock in Pokemon. Yeah, we all we all Pokemon fans here. We're all Pokemon fans who also know who John Ashbury is and, and Rembrandt. We're all on the same page here. Brock always had his eyes closed in Pokemon. He sort of got around about, oh wow, this is a picture. Always sort of got around by just intuition. Okay, in this picture, Kevin Spacey does look a bit like Glenn Greenwald. What on earth are you doing here? That's interesting, what he's doing with his fingers. What's he doing with his fingers? It makes me glad I'm not alive. Um, it makes me glad that I am not alive. It makes me glad that I'm not alive in 1632. Just uh, reminded myself I needed to uh, cut up a honey melon and, and eat it. I figured Gregory Hartle doesn't look too much like Glenn Greenwald, but he might look a bit, and correct me on this if I'm wrong, like the literary critic Harold Bloom. Look at that. No? No resemblance? Perhaps not. And I also found this picture of Glenn Greenwald and Edward Snowden that has a sort of similar format to this picture. Kevin Spacey and s what some man on flick between them to uh, drive this point home. Yeah, this episode's question, is climate change, climate change, was not answered. Is climate change causing <laughs> greenhouse emissions? No, it feels a bit new age. Feels like that's like the eye of Horus, it's at the top of a pyramid. Look at that, you know, I'm not saying anything. Anyway, thank you once again for watching my, my video. I'm wildly and passionately in love with you.